A great meeting point, convenient light meals, hot and cold beverages, or a quick snack on the go? What's your order for the day? We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. Hello and welcome to Real Talk with me, Anel M. Dorda, coming to you live on ACBC 3, the stage is yours. Today, I'm joined by one of the most courageous, bold political leaders that we have come to know, an activist from the dusty streets of Kajiso. She is no stranger to politics and leadership. She started her political, political career as a student activist in the early 1980s before earning her political stripes as an ANC member. Because of her political activities, she was continuously harassed and detained by the apartheid security police. But after the unbanning of the ANC in 1990, she was involved in the re-establishment of the ANC and the SACP structures and held many political positions. She has since earned the title Mama Action for her no-nonsense stance towards service delivery and hardline approach when it comes to corruption. The Honorable Minister Nomvula Mokenyane is here in studio and hopefully she will teach us how to pick up the rent. <laughs> My favorite thing that you've said in the past year, let it fall, we will pick it up. <laughs> Isn't it good that we now have Malusi Kigaba who has really come very assertive in that space? Do you guys actually, now this is what I want to know, do you guys now share a WhatsApp group there? With Malusi. With Malusi we, and the other ministers. We're not on the same WhatsApp group, but we talk to each other quite often. And, uh, and you guys are in WhatsApp groups like? In, we're in, in different WhatsApp groups. Um, what's yours called? Mine is ANC chat group. Chat group? Yep. Mm, I talk to veterans of the ANC. Uh. I talk to former MK combatants. I talk to young leaders. There's another group uh, of uh, young ANC leaders, Mzwandile and mm. them, they call themselves the foodist group because wherever they are, they are eating. Uh -uh. And then uh, there's a women, women, women Life Matter, uh. which is another chat group I belong to. And then there's another chat group of me and my friends. Okay, so when you guys are disagreeing, does it say that Nomvula has left the group? Uh, <laughs> we never leave. We, pe we bring you back. In fact, the others, who, those who leave, are those who can't stand our presence. Okay, yeah. all right. Because we are there also to set the record straight. Mm. Yep. I want to go back to your Kakiso days because I feel like the reason you know how to exist with people is because you grew up in a family of 12 children. Yeah. So you, you, you I mean, 12 children, you're constantly lobbying most. You, you negotiate everything, your sleeping pattern, your eating pattern, everything. Even the, first? Even, even the use of one big soap called Geisha. I'm sure you don't know it. It's a very big soap. It never gets finished. The one you cut You don't the even knife. cut. That's a blue soap. Uh. A geisha, it's like, it's a very big pink soap. The only time you, you get, uh, you, you find it difficult to get it, it's when it has slipped and disappeared under the bed because you're using a, a washing basin in yeah. the bedroom and then it just slips and you're in a hurry to go to church. You don't look for it. And then your mom is going to beat all of you <laughs> up with, like Geisha, Leanne, Ibn Kulu. Ibn Where is it? I mean, this is the mother who says, she had Black mothers, okay. Black yes. mothers will remind you every yep. single day. Yep. You could be a billionaire. Like, yes. hey, I call my yes. Lala. Yes. Lala yes. You know, when I, when I was expecting my first uh, son, Africa, mm. my mom came back from work and uh, you have to make tea. And mm. I detested preparing tea. And the next thing I stand up, I go and rinse the kettle. And she's sitting behind me and she said, Oh, you hadn't told her you were pregnant? Oh, that's typical of a mother. But guess yes. what? You did that. When I delivered the baby, she made that baby to be her baby and uh, looked after my, my baby. He used to sleep on top of a table, warm and lini. And um, her last days on earth, she was off to church. Mm. On a Sunday, it was very cold. She never came back. Oh, Amen. So with your, with your siblings, Nibai 12, are you the last born or are you the second last born? I'm the second last born. My, our, our, our youngest in the family passed on Uzanel. Mm. And um, she was also brought up by my, my, my aunt, Momkulu, mm. who lived in uh, uh, Mkandul. 
she was married there with Mem Usilo, married to a very big family, Agwasilo mm. M. Kanduli, uh, next to the Tafale. Are not from M. They are. Yes. Actually, we, we, you drive past the Olomisas. Yes. And, um, as, as you know, in the in the rural areas, you 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 give the the, the definition of your place through a store. So mm. they they live next to Tafalea she's store on your way to Coffee Bay. You always say it like, "Ha, Anna man, that vengle akwam to danga kape gate. One must look at it. Usuli leke pindu mu." So Zanele became my mom Kulo's child, oh. and uh, so I I took advantage, and I was blessed to be the only one that everybody had to look after. But now, is, were you the only one who was politically inclined? Not really. Um, my other sister, Nombulelo, um, she now well, works for the World Health Organization, um, was, was a, an activist in the, in the 70s during mm. the, the student uprisings. My brother was a, a staunch black consciousness person. Um, and uh, my sister, Nombulelo, was amongst the first to be detained in Kahiso. And... Uh, her own involvement with Abo Temba Shlajwayo, the Matsubani brothers mm. from the Pan-Africanist Congress, actually exposed me also on the need to get organized beyond student politics. So, but they never proceeded up to where I am. Oh. And guess what? With his strong black consciousness, my brother is now a very strong ANC supporter. Yeah, he born again. But you wanted to be a nun? I think all of us, I was very clear that the best thing to do on earth is to be a nun. Uh. Because nuns look after every child, because with me, if I have a running tummy, a running nose, I have a sister. And to figure out sister, they stay in these big, beautiful houses. They always bake cakes. And the most important thing, there's a cookie jar full of sweets there. And then you go to the orchard. And all that they're talking about is about you getting to heaven because oh. you are a good person. So every time, because I, I, we all schooled in a Catholic uh, a school, yeah. at home we were all Catholics, very staunch Catholic family. So I didn't know anything except uh, Catholicism and living with nuns. And I blame even the nuns for my politics. Really? Because at 15 years old, you decided to go into Bef politics? Before 15 years, they exposed me to the situation in, in Lorenzo Marx that time, which was Mozambique. Yeah. And every time you'll hear Gutuano, we must pray for, for, for the people of Lorenzo Marx. Mm. And then there was something called Basuela Dumelo by, by Uganda. Mm. Um, those who, who, who have been convicted out of their faith in Uganda, Catholics who got killed because they stood for the of truth. Of their faith. Yes, and then... Sister Bernard Nube, who's now known, and but she has passed on, was amongst those nuns who explained to us about those things. And guess what? That actually exposed us to some of the wrong things happening in other countries. But fast forward, just my own family life. Yeah. Here is a mother with so many of us. She works, she works alone, but she has made sure that all of us go to school. None of us doesn't have metric. Mm. And of importance, this month she buys one of us a pair of shoes next month she buys somebody else panties and bras the other month she must pay you must pala. but the day she misses to pay rent municipality will come and lock the that's house that's 12 people out of a you place. have to stay outside and you ask yourself How why is she victimized well, and that, those are some of the things that made you to to question the system and say something is not right and partly it also conscientized me about the power of a woman. Did your mom ever shout at you for getting into politics? Yes. Ah. Big time. Um, when, when, so you when, had to hide it from her? When, when, when I got first detained, um, uh. she actually said, Baza Glungi Salamapu. <laughs> the second time I came back from university, kicked out of Ngoye, and she said, Dama Roma Bekna Dile, uh. when I was decided to go to Ambuyoka and allow you to come to Funum Sebins. That's my mother. But in the process, she then actually was amongst those who were defending me because one of our own relatives, her, her own uncle, mm. Obabu Squili, was one of the security branch and very strong people who are known in Kahiso as uh, the, the police. Mm. And um, they actually set me down and said, I must get out of this thing. But when she came to accept, she called the same people who are her own cousins, uh, Squili, and put them down and said, you know what? I've, I'm, I think this is what Nomvula wants, and this is what 
makes her to be who she is. It is her calling. Listen, we're only getting started. If there's anything you'd like to know about the minister, hit us up with a WhatsApp voice note. Make sure it's no more than 20 seconds. You can send us a tweet, anything you want to say. If you want to say, what's up? How are you? You want a glass of water? Any of that? <laughs> Get hold of us on WhatsApp. We're coming right back. Outspoken and sometimes controversial, Minister Nomfule Mokanyane is never the one to shy away from expressing her views, most often laced with humor. She has led a distinguished career spanning nearly three decades in politics, but where did it all begin for her? Uh, before we get into that, apparently Geisha Soap is trending. Oh my word. Twitter. Ah, Mara, you guys, sorry that I don't know it. Me, I'm from the <laughs> Eastern Cape. I know Life Boy, I know Blue Soap and Palm Olive. Ask his, but now I've learned something. I see you guys are sending all those pictures in. So. When it comes to, you know, the struggle, ne? Um, Mama Abigail Kobeka was here the other day, and obviously she was in the struggle in a mm. different manner because mm. they, they, they fought the struggle through arts. Mm. And I asked her, was it always bad? Obviously there were good times, yeah. right, in the struggle. Yeah. Yes, you're fighting, but there are some good elements. What good elements can you remember from it? The love for one another. You know, yeah. oh, the, the spirit of comradeship was so good. Um, I was telling some people about how I came to Nova Tavig. Mm. Um, you are sent to Peter Maritzburg, Midlands, and you have to go and work in that area. You are not given anything in terms of uh, money for you to eat and every other thing. And you arrive there. Here is this uh, young woman as well uh, who works in that space. And the next thing, you don't have any place to sleep. And you are told you will go with Batabile. And you arrive at Batabile's home. You are the most loved by Batabile's mom than than her. Oh. And the next thing is Batabile's mother who will take out Batabile's, she's a pantsula, uh -uh. so you'll see Batabile's clothes there, she has a baka. The difference is that my shoe size and hers were different. But her mother will look after me, but she will scold Batabile for going around. Mm. Those were the nice things. In Kahiso, I still have a friend, Mahauta, who we grew up together in mm. the township. We got involved in the struggle together and our first boyfriends were like friends oh. and they were older than us. And it was so nice because uh, they were driving a white and black valiant and the sad part was my parents didn't approve of this relationship. And uh, it so happened that one day on New Year's Eve, we had to go to Mzimhlope in Soweto mm. and I wanted to Go with them, and there's my friend Mahauta. She's dressed up. Mm. She's sitting at the back seat. I kula bag ngelo nishosha epoxi ni enga semuf. And my parents actually called me because my brother was getting married on the 31st. But I'm boshamba itong. Your friends, your, everything goes down, and I cried and I cried and I cried. But the beauty about it. Once they stopped in a shop and tried to buy things, Mahauta got off the car and came and helped me to wash the wall. That's the friend. I mean, okay. she, she sacrificed her okay. happiness. Okay. And until today, we're friends. She works as a traffic cop in Mohale City. Mm. She's a mother of three kids. We have two kids who are sharing the same name, Katleho. Mm. Her, hers has passed on. Mine is still alive. That's my daughter called Katleho. Mm. And we just love one another. Mm. Who else, who else did you meet early on in the days that you're still close with and get along with now? You know Mondli Kungubel? Eh, eh? Yes. I came across Mondli, we were at the Carros Hotel. And that time it was during the UDF days. Yeah. And we, I used to work under Jesse Duarte. That's one person who, Jesse is older than me, but Jesse is more than a friend and a mother. There's nothing that we have not done with Jesse. Abusing her husband's car <laughs> late at night going to, to go and buy a bottle of grass. You know a bottle, a bottle and of grass? Okay, grass the 69 guys. cent. The, the, the white yes. wine and imna. And yes, the, uh, and then we'll go and buy uh, chicken at, uh, at uh, Tanduri, mm -mm. and we eat, and then we go. Then we have a workshop with the health workers. As we said, towards the formation of Nehau, mm. but through Namda, with Sis Amanda Gwadi, Jesse has sent us to, to, to Johannesburg, Carlos Hotel. Mm. Arrive there. Here is this man wearing white a white uh, nurse's uniform and a bikini that shows a pink bikini <laughs> and i didn't know him and as we were registering he came and he stood next to me he says hey what in the actor that, that um, <laughs> and that kalaga <laughs> gubi made us friends with monthly 
the distinction between my relationship no more. Even in Gauteng with my politics and differences between me and Nabo Paul, Nabo Monti yes, till today. Yes. What used to be a difference is that we'll fight in a meeting and I'll tell him who I support and who I don't support. And thereafter we'll go and drink together and go and have parties, go to Mirafong together, but come back tomorrow morning in a conference and fight. Mm -hmm. What has happened into that? Only the devil knows. But these are the kind of people. Jessie, as I'm saying, Jessie for me is not a DSG. She's become a confidant, mm. a sister. She's more of a big sister to my husband. She's, she's an aunt to our children. Um, she's my mentor. And uh, the things we have done mm. under the leadership of Umamu Albertina Sisulu. Mm. I always, she always says, hey, this child is like Umamu. But she's from here. Yes. I, I, I hear that Umamu Abigail Sisulu was a, very, was a big mentor for you. Umamu Albertina Sisulu was a, a very Al big Albertina. mentor to, to me. And because she always also had similar features like my mother, high built, stature, big bodied, but who actually abo pamabele? Fag is talking. So we beka kuchle ufunde. Unga ngeni tanga nswe nunga zuguti otetanga don. Ma unga yazi tulu mamele ngomso wambuye zalento kuchwenga. So umama, I worked very closely with her to an extent we. When she worked at uh, Dr. Asfad's uh, surgery, yeah. she would come and say, Ambisa Lama Pili in Tombazanandin. And the strange thing, she called me in Tombazanandin, which my mother also used to call us. Mm. My mom, because Sonke Singo Nombulelo Nombula Noma Temba Noba. You know when they forget your name? Yes, in Tombazanandin. Tomba and and you must, lap, you zap, must answer. Yeah. Ati Nombulelo Ulule, Uzobe Tela Wuta Upendulanga, and yet you are Nombula. So Masulu will say, Ambisa Lama Pili Sipaya. The strange thing, you carry a suitcase. Mm. You take these things somewhere to Mzimshope, Gwamam Tua Lady, Gwamam June, and mm. all those things. And only to find that these are the ordinary people, including the neighbors around Abu Mamu Chun Mlangeni, a convent, a Roma, mm. who will come and get information either going out of the country or coming into the country. And most importantly, the thing that really made me to and still appreciate that I've worked and been supervised by Umamu Albertina Sisul was to not be threatened by men. Yes, which, which I applaud you for because you know there's a situation where as women, and, and there's very, a lot of women who look up to you for that, you kind of thought that, you know, speak when spoken to, cower down, when there's, when there's a situation, you, you know, you are, you are counting the woman in the room, yeah. you know? The day when we, when, when we launched the UDF, yeah. when Masisulu addressed the crowds in Michelle's Plain, all these men spoke, all these men spoke. Masisulu just, you know, honesty, mm -hmm. and she stood up when she said Amandla. Huh? And Masisulu didn't just say Viva UDF, she said Viva ANC. Mm. And you know, that moment and her statement yeah. about why the UDF. Hmm? Your fathers are in prison, your fathers are in exile, your sisters are perishing in prison, Tandi Mudisa and them were still in prison, and many others were in exile. And all she said is that we are not doing it for ourselves. We are doing it to bring back those that are in exile, those that are in prison. We must liberate those that are younger than mm. us because they look up to us. You ask me, that post Shagama Sisul, Niko Pekrit. When I stand up, I make sure that I, I assert myself more than the men who had spoken to me. And you don't open me. your mouth when you don't and know what so you're going to say. And if I have to say it, I must say it and make sure that it makes a difference. My conviction until today is precisely because of what Mama said on the founding of the UDF. Okay, we're going to take an end break. When we come back, I want to talk about the time that you were arrested. I want to <laughs> look at your face. You're like, ah, oh, man. <laughs> My criminal record I is coming I thought you were going to ask me about me and clubbing and all those ah, things. Ah, Suga. Please, I, man. Oh, no, okay. of course we will. We've already started on the grass almost. <laughs> I mean, we've broken that seal. It was New Year's Eve, grass, we're already in there. And I also want to know what your greatest regret in politics is. Yeah. Have a think about that yeah. one. Back in 2009, the daughter of Kahiso was sworn in as the first female premier of Gauteng, making her the first woman to head South Africa's economic powerhouse. More on her career when we return.
Water and Sanitation Minister Nombula Mokinyane is our guest today. We know her for many things, but notably her witty remarks. She brought us the lines, keep your dirty votes. Then there was, and then her latest that we all love, we will pick up the rant. But really, who is Minister Nombula Mokinyane? Uh, during the break, we're drinking water, right? And then she gets her water, and then she, uh, our stage manager takes the, the water. It's like, don't throw it away. We don't waste water here, so she never knocks off. <laughs> you never knock off. This is, this is who you are. There's no 24-7 for water, uh -huh. even for a politician. Yeah. There's no break. And, uh, and I think w when you are into a responsibility, you must live it. Mm. And that's me. And it's the only way you can actually make things work Absolutely. and fully live, get the live, results. Live it and understand what it is all about. But now your politics once got you arrested. Yep. And you were pregnant. Yep. And you gave birth inside jail. I was... Um, 11 days married oh. and our wedding day in Manseville didn't end nicely. Mm. Um, as we came from, you know, Tina Maskula, Umsha will go and take pictures at Town Hall because that's the nicest that's place. That's the nice place with yes. the building yes. and yes. the yes. manicured gardens. And that statue of Paul Kruger there. <laughs> and uh, so we went, we took pictures and in my wedding, there were less of, oh, Mm. It was most of the revolutionary songs, songs yeah. because that's what we were living. And the next thing, a helicopter came past and they threw tear gas canisters. That was the end of the ceremony. But it then incited everybody in Mansova. People mm. were very angry to say, well, how can this thing actually happen? And then, but by that time I was two months uh, pregnant. Mm. So 11 days after that wedding, they came, they picked us up. Uh, we used to live in a two-room shack, mm. and our shack was like also a fence at my in-laws mm. because they lived in a two-roomed house, and then there were all these shacks for each one, and my husband's one was like the penthouse of the yard. So they come, they pick us up. We're making jokes. We're very annoyed. Mm. Remember also when you are under pressure, you are taught that you must never show them that you, you yeah. are hurting or you are scared. And when they separated us from the fourth floor, in Krugersop, where the security branch was. When we arrived there, there was Sister Bennett, there was Lawrence Ntokwa, there were too many there. Mm. And we all said, well, we're making a joke. This is the honeymoon yaga no said. You know, we left. He went this way, I went this way. He only came to see our child, Ritlabusa, when he was 16 months old. So you gave birth in, inside prison? Yes, and myself, together with Sister Bennett, yeah. This MEC, mm, mm, mm. you think I'm a jailbird, Sizagele is worse of a jailbird. <laughs> uh, Connie Babela, the wife to Obet Babela, uh -huh. all of them, we were in solitary confinement. With men, it was better because they were in a communal. We, when we arrived there, the person we found was Connie. Connie was in and out of prison. They will release her upon her getting into the gate, yeah. they will detain her. And take her, her back gate. in. And then there was Popomolife's wife, Pinda. Um, she's originally from the Eastern Cape. The father used to be a very strong activist of the UDF. Mm. So Pinda was arrested as well. So we find Pinda there. When I was detained previously, I left her there. Mm. She was still there. The next thing, they all left us. It was me and Sister Bennett um, and Connie, mm. who remained alone there. And we, we got released precisely because of the Goldstone Commission. Mm. When Goldstone came in, about children in detention, yeah. about, uh, about uh, uh, detention without trial, because we had thought we were detained under the state of emergency. But isn't there like a time frame, like they, they can't keep you for longer than a certain amount of days? That's why what they will do with Connie. Connie will spend 14 days and then she, go, she goes out. Outside of the premises, they say you are rearrested. Just like Amos Masondo, mm, the former, mm, you know, mm, all of us, when there was going to be a massive clamp down, we'll know. Once they arrest Amos Masondo, but they can't cool. Yes. So did, how long did you stay with your baby inside uh, prison? We got released and we got released the day after. Okay. And then we went to Jobek Jen. And in Jobek Jen, there was a... Uh, Mephi Murobe mm. and Vali Musa, who were also in hiding, intending to run to the American embassy because they were in detention. They got arrested in KZN, brought to Johannesburg. Then they pretended to go to That's the only outing you have. So I suppose so, 
what? Because I, I, in my mind, I was thinking being pregnant is an advantage. No. It's there not. are many people who have done that. Um, Cicely Indi herself has had her own experience, Sisulu. Um, there's, a, there's a lady, Mutanaga Vesta Smith, uh, who has also given birth in, in detention. So did, is there a nurse? Is there no. a midwife? It's called solitary confinement. Your companion is the end. So you give birth by yourself? Yes, you do. Just like you do any other thing. You do it all by yourself. The only difference is that when you are in a prison like Sun City, it's better than Kruger's Op. In Kruger's Op, you do all those things. There's a bucket there that you use as your toilet. There's a bucket with water there. There's a sponge that you're sleeping on. So why does your child eat breastfeeding and naturally? You get taken out and then you take oh. to the hospital section. Then they take you to Jobek Gen. Then you arrive at Jobek Gen. Then they want to bring you back. You go back to the clinic and then, what is it, the, the clinic section. Uh. Then they take you back home. I was helped by Goldstein and, and Sister Bennett. Because uh, what happened was there was a lot of mobilization by mm. the Catholic uh, bishops' conference. Because what had happened, and these are the things that I still believe our TRC could have done more than mm. what it has done. Mm. Um, we had a, a nun called Sister Raphael and Sister Christina. Uh, they all were at the Catholic uh, convent in Kahisu. They got detained, and Sister Raphael was tortured because they wanted her to turn into a state witness against mm. us and U Sister Bennett, and they released her upon them realizing that she has health complications. She got released, we couldn't even go and bury her. Until today, nobody, nobody has come forward. We could not even go in and give testimony in the mm. TRC on these issues because they were not actually defined and so, as some of the things that have to be attended to. Sister Christine, Upon her release from prison, she actually had kidney complications That's that awesome. actually took her away. Yeah. It's fine with me. It's fine with Sister Bennett. But what pains me is that we have seen ordinary, innocent people being killed because the system wanted them to turn against us. Just like yeah. me, when they would say, you rather, if you want to go out with this baby of yours, tell, tell, tell us what your husband yes. is doing. Where are they? Where are they hiding? What are they planning? What exactly. are they plotting? And I think it's, it's, I mean, it's easy to, to torture a woman. And that's why, Gemina Anele, even with you journalists, you'll never get information from me. <laughs> Worse now, because you can't even inflict pain. I refuse mm. to be used to sell one of my own. I don't believe in that. I hate it. And it's from, it's from back there. It's from my life experience. Yeah. Even when we were young, there are, there are, I've got comrades, young comrades. One of them is Zandisile Musi. He's the brother to Mbulelo Musi who now works with Minister Nosejo. You need to write Marcus. a book, the way you remember names. Yes, one. Like, it's people I've lived with. Okay. It's, it's not whatever. So, Mbule, Zandi Can I hold you there? Yes. The story you're going to tell us, we must yeah. go to a break. Yeah. But before we go to a break, somebody wants to say something to you. They sent in a WhatsApp voice note, and they said, please play this for Mama. Roll it. Hi, Anale. Hi, I'm Nam Vula. Um, my name is Kat Katel. Um, I would love to know from Mam Nam Vula, like, what would she tell a young woman who would love to do politics one day? Okay, she will answer that question when we come back from the break. <laughs> and we're back with Mam Nom Vula Mokanyana. Uh, before the break, a WhatsApp came through asking her how she would advise a woman who wants to get into politics. Yes. The simple thing is, first, know your identity. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the best thing that I always say happened to some of us was the issue about black consciousness. First, understand who you are and, and appreciate why you find yourself under these situations mm -hmm. so that then when you get involved, you understand what it requires. Mm -hmm. Secondly, understand the world. A, have a bit of an understanding of Africa have a better understanding of the world and identify a course mm. that can take you into this. Like with me, it was the issues around student politics, but at the age of 18, I was a publicity secretary of the residence organization. <laughs> but you do that because you, you feel this, these elders are organized. I will use my ability to communicate on their behalf. Mm. So find the space and most importantly also, 
This thing that I'm saying about Umama, or Albertina Sisulu, Sister Panat, uh, my husband, my husband was a trade unionist and a leader in Manseville. Mm. I lived in Kahiso. Ma I made him to be my mentor. Um, and, and I've learned even Nanam, Nanam Sanji, there's a lot. He, he makes comments and edits every speech I make like and yeah. all those things. But I tell him a summary speech at the end of the day. So it is those things. Find people that can help you to, to, to be assertive and to be part of the process and identify positive people you can relate to. And I'm happy she, her name is Katleho. My daughter is Katleho. Yes. yes, when she said Katleho, I said, there comes my baby again. <laughs> but now there's a big notion, maybe it's a misconception or it's a myth or, but it's founded somewhere because there's no ways it just came out of that. If we want to get into politics as women, there's a certain level of like sleeping our way to the top that's going to have to happen. What do you have to say about that? It has, it has been said, I mean, you, you read the stories of all women revolutionaries and feminists. Mm. I mean, the stories about Rosa Luxemburg, everyone, um, you, you find that 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 sticks on a woman is Ulala mm. Nuban. And yet, mm. I can tell you, there's no time to sleep. <laughs> uh, secondly, you, you have many other things that preoccupies you. Mm. Thirdly, what we must never, never undermine is the presence of patriarchy that takes a different form. The abuse, the emotional and the psychological abuse of women. Mm. Because nowadays, it's not even about men against women. It, it is even woman against, against woman. woman in the interest of men. So that spirit of solidarity is very important. That comradeship is very important. I can tell you sitting here, the things you hear mostly that are negative about female activists are unfounded. But because they don't occupy the space, mm. but even in the newsroom and in the editorial rooms, we don't have women who will come in and understand what is happening. Because, because I'll rush to say, Hi, when are you sleeping with yes. women instead of fighting the policies exactly. that you are coming exactly. up with? Exactly, and say, no, no, no. But wh why has she been labeled like this? It's all because she, she can speak out and she has stood all these people and she has survived. And her survival is not taken out of her hard work, mm. out of her carrying everybody, including those that were said, Utulala Nabo, because Uba Tutulala Panen Tutwini Uba Korope, Babe Ngabantu, and celebrate their success. The success of any African child that comes through a woman especially through a woman. If it mm. is male, it's all because Lelenai. of the sexual fevers. But you know what is important? If your conscience and you yourself know that you have not done it, just move on. I've had those experiences. Waking up out of my house, mom um, tandazo, mm. um, tandazo, going to Kahiso, opposite my church, there's a big post about Nomvula and the Pente. And the Pente. And you know what you do? You walk in there and you tell this man up there, Ayo Yamle. Uh, you yeah. sort it out. Because those who know me, the silent majority, know who I am. But wait, quietly, quietly, you must be like, who's son and no one's six, but <laughs> Actual, <laughs> I've, got, I've got that potential. Actually, you know what, what, it, what, it, what it, it says to you? You are a threat. Uh -huh. You are a threat, and they can't find fault in your politics. Mm. They can't find fault in your work. And therefore, they must do. They must mention something. Because they need. They need. That's exactly they my need. point. Therefore, it's your way to get against them. Because they need. And remember, I'm not the adversary. Mm. I'm not the one that is going to be fighting for you. Mm. Therefore, it's your way against them. And remember, I'm not the editor. What sells is the poster in the morning okay. on Sunday. But for me, the pa the worst pain I have suffered cannot be measured against what people are saying today. What and pain it is was the, that? And it is the pain of of even almost losing your own grandmother, mm. when the apartheid system will come and bomb your house in your presence, when there's an attempt to kidnap you through a taxi that you are in, and when you have to be detained and isolated and suffer with your children all by yourself. And today, now that people have a freedom of expression, think they can demoralize me, never. Never. And I like the way you were saying, my husband, my husband, my husband, because even then they're like, no, your husband left the house, your husband left, but now he ring him was all right. Can I tell you the masterpiece? We were 31 years married. Three, um, one. Uh, the only time we were separated was through the apartheid government for 16 months. And then when they got released, because I left prison, they got released, we were banned, restricted to Jablani in Soweto. 
We couldn't set our feet in Kahiso. I joined him. So the thing is, AM no mienwam nye to see two. Always tattoo is an intruder. So I'm a headline in. Um, the intruders. He it's intruders. And the, the most important thing is that because one has seen how women revolutionaries and assertive women have been destroyed through their personalities, you, you learn from that. You learn. Mm. I know what has happened to women such as Sabo Mamu Nomzamo. Umamu in. Exactly. Umamu in. Why, why, yes. What concerns you about who exactly. she, she sleeps with? Because them, you see, people. what is good is when you go and cry on her, on her breasts, she actually says, Kulungi ilem tanam. And you walk home and you meet your husband and your husband says, Mokhai, so how are you? How was your day? Nambe niziele gui, 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 and you are fine. Because the best person who understands you are those who love you. Anyone who's been saying things, and you see the, the masterpiece is that negative stories are said by faceless people. So mm. I'm not going to increase the sale of newspapers by responding to them. What I will do, mm. two, what I will do is to proceed and be hard nosed. If I mess up with people who have been comfortable and I'm pushing transformation, I will do it. And if I dare, trample on your toes for a right thing. I'm ready to stomach it out. Chesa, listen, being the minister of the most difficult portfolio is a very tough job, but could it be tougher than being a parliamentarian? <laughs> Stay watching. <laughs>
okay. your pure mach, okay, the backward devu, thinking, okay. Zonda, those who are full of hatred. So redneck if they were Americans, yeah. or the middle America. Yeah, you know, that, that's one person, you wish I wouldn't, I shouldn't meet him in Alone. a dark corner, he'll kill me. Yeah. Because but hatred is written in his anger. face. Oh, so now, Parliament, after you guys, this happens, do you guys go out and uh, eat in the same place and hang out, or do you pass each other and go, <coughs> Between you and me, there are those that I don't greet. Okay. Yes. And right. But there are, I'm, and I'm at peace with it, mm. because there are those that I've, I think they've defined themselves as people who hate me, mm. and, and people who have no respect for the NC and its leadership. Mm. But there are those that he, thereafter we come across and we talk about things. Mm. And, and that's how you manage it. The most important thing is that when we debate there in parliament, don't think we're son enemies, all of us. Yes. And yes. the next thing people fight and kill each other outside. Yeah. But there are those who, the sad thing about this latest term of government in, in, in parliament, we've got people white and black, who are just haters. Yeah. It's, it's just they want to comment and not necessarily build. They're not the worried connection. about what we're doing. Simple thing I can tell you, uh, uh, Konamanji, is we have had, when I came in Nomvula, everybody thought there would be a miracle of water in abundance. I know, because I was like, what a, what a fitting name. And the next name. thing, <laughs> there was a drought for mm. three years. And everybody from the opposition was condemning us, including the AG and everybody, to say we have wasted money by doing things that were not in our annual plans and stuff. But now because it's hitting the Western Cape, I get letters to say, how much are you giving Western Cape? And the thing is, sometimes the things we do, we must never politicize. And you see, as we speak now... Because water is not political, no. guys. Amanda, I political. Uh, well, that's why I work very close with that minister there of Cocta. Yeah. the provincial MEC. I work very closely with Patricia. They've gone to Richards Bay in an ANC municipality, in an ANC province, to see how things are done. So we must also begin to appreciate parliamentary dynamics as, yeah. as South Africans. You, you are having, and I, you're a very hard worker, ne? and you've had many portfolios, and obviously one of the most prominent was as Gauteng minister. But to me, it looks like you're having the most fun with this water and sanitation portfolio. It's like you love to make sure that everyone must get water. It, it's fulfilling. Ne? It's it fulfilling is. because it brings the dignity of South Africans out. And it can unite. It can unite all of us South Africans because rich and poor, young and old, urban and all need water. you all need water. And we must complement one another. The other space that I really used to enjoy was in safety because even with safety, you can be a multi-billionaire. It's the same as somebody who's selling tomatoes in a corner, who also needs to make sure that these streets are safe and he or she is protected. Every space I've enjoyed, you know, I, I'm sure nobody ever thought I could be an MEC for agriculture and environment in Gauteng. Today we've got cradle of humankind. Mm. And it's that this girl like... from Kahiso. And uh, people can't believe, we've got Ikaele Temba in, 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 in Gauteng, an, an integrated uh, victim support program. We've done it. Here you've got Cosmo City. And by the way, the Stain City. I was <laughs> insulted for corruption, for doing the Stain City roads. And we said, because we want to grow Gauteng's economy and we want integrated uh, communities, we put money to do, to do the connection. And that is it. The unfortunate thing, our life never gets celebrated. But you must write a book. They don't call you, and it must be called Mama Action. Uh -huh. Because they don't call you Mama Action for nothing. Listen, thank you so much. We've only just scraped the surface. We haven't even dealt with sanitation. So I guarantee you, she will be back here. So we can talk to her again. But thank you so much to the minister for taking time out of a very busy schedule to come onto the show. Right now, though, uh, equally as important, National Science Week has been nothing but a huge success. And as promised here on Real Talk, we're showcasing some of SA's brightest and talented young minds who may one day be in Parliament, like Umama Nomvula, doing innovative things with the science that the government has jumped on board and offering them. Gauteng born motorized bicycle inventor. Here he is. His name is Nkosana Madi. Have a look. My name is Nkosana Hati. The one thing that I love about biking is the freedom, you know, that you have when you're on that bike. Well, I've been a full-time biker for four years. With bikes, once you get on it, it's very difficult to get off the bike. When his treasured bicycle broke one day, it got the South Tour DJ as well as sound and lighting technician thinking. When my bike broke four years ago, it was a bike that I was supposed to use 
for my rounds when I came back from my place because I moved back home. I just needed to fix that bike, buy new forks, put them in, and then the bike was okay. I wasn't content with that. I gave it a chop and chop here, weld here, chop there, and then made a new design out of it. I taught myself to design my bikes from scratch, even from school. You know, I was very big on sketching, you know, sketch cars or sketch bikes. The whole thing was I wanted to bring those sketches to life myself. What I did is I bought little tools here and there, little welders, tried to see how these things work, and then with time I got the hang of it. The 33-year-old Guatemala-born and raised innovator went on to develop and build an affordable hybrid motorized bicycle all from scratch. I came about a guy, he used to stock these, uh, the motors. So I gave him a call, went to his place, I picked up one, and then I put it into the, the bicycle that I made, and it worked like a chunk. It was the Department of Science and Technology's grassroots innovation program that gave Ngosana the opportunity to attend the Festival of Innovation in India that recognizes and rewards grassroots inventions. What I realized when we went there, other than the business aspect of things, is people from India, they innovate out of necessity as opposed to uh, a lot of people innovating or inventing out of luxury. It's very simple mechanics that they use. They take your everyday uh, material and stuff that you won't think it's hard to get and they make something out of that. Gosana is just one of many who have received assistance from the DST Council for Scientific and Industrial Research that has been lending support to grassroots inventors, especially those with little training. They help turn their creations into successful commercial enterprises. My plans for the future are to have a fully fleshed workshop assembly line, which is gonna couple as a showroom and offices as well. I wanna have that factory because one, it's gonna translate into job creations and uh, it's gonna be a huge skills and uh, technology transfer platform for a lot of people. I'd love to see Scoop Makatini riding on my bike. Damn, I'd give anything to get to see Kuli Chan on my bikes. And pretty much everyone and everyone who would fit the type of lifestyle that we're trying to push, you know, that's bike orientated, you know? Okay, let's hope Scoop Makatini as well as Kuli Chan are watching and they're gonna get on your bike. Gosana, a round of applause to you. Even the minister is well impressed with you, okay? If you're watching that, please make sure that you do support Gosana in realizing his dream. We need inventors, we need innovators, people. From us and the team, what an amazing show it's been. We'll check it tomorrow, 5 p.m. Bye for now.